in the vastness of the cosmos, there must be other civilizations far older and more advanced than ours. So shouldn't we have been visited? Shouldn't there be every now and then alien ships in the skies of Earth? There's nothing impossible in this idea, and no one would be happier than me if we were being visited. But has it happened in fact? What counts is not what sounds plausible, not what we'd like to believe, not what one or two witnesses claim, but only what is supported by hard evidence, rigorously and skeptically examined. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Since 1947, there have been hundreds of thousands of reports of UFOs, unidentified flying objects. This subject has more, I think, to do with religion and superstition than with science. Let's consider one of the most famous accounts of a supposed encounter with alien beings. On September 19, 1961, an American couple were driving home through New Hampshire. What's the matter, Delcy? They were returning along a lonely road late at night from a vacation in Canada. Remember, we have only their word for what happened next. You still don't believe it, do you? No, I don't. There must be a reasonable explanation. <sighs> they had observed, so they said, a strange moving light in the sky. By definition, an unidentified flying object. It seemed to follow them for miles. What's the matter with that dog? After a time, the lighting patterns on the UFO changed. It appeared to land. It blocked the road, preventing them from driving on. They said they saw mouthless creatures approaching who were not exactly human. Barney? Barney? Barney, what is that? At this point, the story becomes still stranger. They lost all recollection of what happened in the next few hours. But weeks later, they said, they recalled some details and discussed the experience with others. Twenty-six months later, under hypnosis, they reported that a UFO had landed and that the crew had emerged. They were captured, they said, and taken aboard the craft. That was the story told by Betty and Barney Hill. Virtually all scientists who've studied it are skeptical. But UFO enthusiasts think the Hill case is a classic example of a close encounter of the third kind. Why? What makes it so special? While on board, Betty had noticed a book written in an unknown hieroglyphic writing. She was also shown a strange window through which she could see a glowing pattern of dots connected with lines. It was, they told her, a star map displaying the routes of interstellar commerce. Afterwards, the hills were released and permitted to return home. Or at least this is their story. Now, believers find this account compelling, or at least plausible, chiefly because of the alleged star map. Here's what Betty Hill said it looked like. Now, why would anybody take this seriously? Because here is a real map 
widely publicized by UFO enthusiasts, of 15 selected nearby stars, including the Sun, as seen from one particular vantage point in space. This map includes stars that were first cataloged several years after Betty Hill recalled what she says she saw in the alien ship. Her map required, we are told, information that was not then available on the Earth. There is a resemblance between the two maps, but that's mainly because the lines corresponding to navigation routes have been copied from the Hill map onto the real star map. If we were to substitute some other set of lines for the Hill lines, we find that the eye suddenly is biased against uh, seeing any agreement between the two maps at all. To make an objective test, however, let's remove the lines altogether. And then there's very little resemblance left. But these particular stars are selected from a large catalog of star positions. Our vantage point in space is also selected to make the best possible fit with the hill map. If you can pick and choose from a large number of stars, viewed from any vantage point in space you want, you can always find something resembling the pattern you're looking for. I'm surprised that nobody could find a better fit to the hill map. The Hill's own psychiatrist described their story as a kind of dream. There's no corroborating evidence. The star map argument is worthless. And yet, this is one of the best attested cases of UFO close encounters. For all I know, we may be visited by a different extraterrestrial civilization every second Tuesday. But there's no support for this appealing idea. The extraordinary claims are not supported by extraordinary evidence. There are curious daylight photos of UFOs. Some look suspiciously like uh, hats or hubcaps thrown into the air. Photos can be faked. More common are unidentified lights at night. They're often aircraft, but if we can't identify a light, that doesn't make it a spaceship. Here's a movie of what you might think is a UFO. Actually, it's a piece of an asteroid burning up as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Most reports of unidentified flying objects turn out to be something else, like the refracted image of a bright planet or the re-entry of an artificial satellite. Some are psychological aberrations, some are hoaxes. Never. Is there any compelling physical evidence, a detailed close-up photograph of a strange spacecraft or a small device of extraterrestrial manufacture or a book written in alien hieroglyphics? Never. There are reports of such things, but never the things themselves. <laughs>